All right, y'all, today is the day. This downpipe's going on. Got off work early, it's Friday. Got like four and four hours and some change, or three hours and some change to get this done before they close here. So, shouldn't take us that long. And I only work a lot the way, so the gas is not hot. And I just checked um, my O2 sensor removal tool does fit under the, um, what's it called, the brace in the engine bay. I thought I was gonna have to remove that, which means Put the car back on the ground, take the hardware off the struts for the strut tower brace, that's what it is. But I have clearance and I'll show you guys. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna get that O2 sensor off real quick, get off the heat shield up top if it's not too hot, which it shouldn't be because the car wasn't ran much. We're gonna get on the car, get out the Sawzall, cut the exhaust right at the downpipe because it's one big, huge, long pipe and I don't wanna deal with all that. So we'll cut that, move the drive shaft and uh, unbolt the downpipe. And well, a couple heat shields probably in the way uh, I'm both down the pipe, swing it out, swing a new one in. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna throw some headphones in, we'll get to recording, wrenching, get this shit done. I'm so excited to hear this thing. Guys, I got a little scratch on it already. This damn thing, I should have took it off. Ah, uh, even wrapped it up so it wouldn't get scratched. We won't see it anyway. We got a few things in here, pull the tripod out, brought some alcohol so we can get the fingerprints off this thing so it doesn't stain it permanently and uh get this tripod set up like i was saying about that o2 sensor how close it is to the strut bar we'll get that out real quick that'll be easy and then we'll disconnect the plug over there for uh the bottom one get this heat shield off and there should be another bracket for the downpipe itself that we'll be able to see better after that shields off try and demonstrate this as best as i can so this is what you see from the front of the engine bay you got a five mil, which is over by the coolant nipple. You got a 10 mil that's at the top, which is on top of the turbo. You got two more 10 mils on the back side. This is going down the side of the block where the belts are. And in this middle one, you can't get to that 10 mil nut because it's right on the turbo. It's like impossible. But on the back side, there is a nut, which is also a 10 mil. And you can, once you do all the rest, you go to this one and then uh, you can just unscrew it. This threads into the block. Now I'll try and show you guys all the spots here. So this is your nut on the turbo. You got a five mil that goes right there. Uh, 10 mils, probably hard to show. One goes there and one goes further down. I think it's that very bottom one down there, yeah. And then the one that goes into the block is right there. You can see how close this is to the turbo or to the downpipe, which is really ugly. It's a really, really ugly downpipe. So there is no room to get to the other side of that, but you just undo it from the block and it slides right out. Even with the, the bar there, no issue. So that's the first thing uh, I said, got this undone. Uh, the other one, the, the way this clip is in the back, I need to get this heat shield out of my way so I can reach back here. This clips like backwards into the clip. So you gotta like pull it forward towards you, towards the front of the car to unclip it and then be able to get it around the clip and get it down which is still a little hot to do, but uh, better shot the turbo from here. It's a juicy boy. Now we're gonna get this O2 sensor off while the exhaust is still warm. And then I think from there, we can uh, start seeing, I think there's like a bracket down here somewhere. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera. We'll figure it out. There's a bracket to the block on the downpipe. And then we got a couple heat shields we gotta remove really shouldn't be too bad and then of course we've got our what feels like a six mil here and we'll we'll reverse this so this is in the front make it a little bit easier um, but yeah let's get this off and go from there if you're like me and don't have much room grab a socket extend yourself give you more leverage she's loose I'm coming out all right so my setup is going to be a lot different than most people well, my, my couple of little rust spots here, but I got, uh, you know, the Brookline tubular stuff. So my steering rack sits higher because of these spacers. If you guys remember from the old video, I, I raised my um, steering rack and my sway bar. So, but to get to the down, or to the down, to the uh, drive shaft, hardware right there, boom, it's gonna be a little tight. And then we'll have to undo the dog bone so we can swing the engine back a little bit to get that off, set it to the side and then we can uh we'll be able to pull this down pipe. that'll give us a room to pull the downpipe out 
eventually. But for right now, I need to, I don't want to deal with this whole section coming out at once because it's all connected. Um, so I'm going to slice it right here, I think. Slice it right there. Should I slice it right now? I'm not going to have enough room to do it here, I don't think. Actually, it might be just enough room to do it right there. So I didn't record the whole thing because it was a little difficult. Oh shit, I'm on 2X. Kind of had to do it like a Y, but uh, they're disconnected. They are fully disconnected. Guess I never hit start on the time lapse, but it's too crazy, but it's out. Two 13s down there, two 13s up here. Came right off. Loosen up this 13, about to pull it out. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Where is it? I lost it. Oh, it's back here. Sheesh, it's kind of hard to show on camera. There it is, right up in there. There you go. Sign it. See it there behind the axle. See it there. See it here. Looking up at it. You'll need to get that off for the dumb bite. Yeah, you're cool. I was told I had to drill these off and you don't. With the flathead from behind, you just get it some. The leverage. These bad boys pop right out. Didn't rip it, didn't damage it. Um, right there, but really, good to go. All right, guys, this one is gonna be a pain for a lot of you. Oh, the heat shields in general are kind of really shitty, and there might be a different way to do it that's better, but this is just the way that I'm doing it. So you got these two eight mils. This um, shields the axle from heat. So if you forgot your long eight mil on a stick, a T50 fits in there perfectly and they're not on there tight, I promise you. I'll try and show you guys exactly where this sits. So right there, you got your two posts, boom, right there. One and two, um, I'll, I'll put the shield back in to show you actually, cause it's a little bit easier, but it's not the most fun piece, but it's gonna get done. So this will slide go up in this way. And if you've done this on a Mark 7, it's literally the same exact thing. It's hard to do this with the camera in my hand. Let's see if this goes. Sorry, guys. Boom. So it goes right here, shielding the axle. You can kind of, you will be able to see the one, like, what angle am I looking at? You'll be able to see the one right there. With the back one, you won't be able to see it all. So you're at the kind of feel for it, get in there. It's not bad. No, you gotta get those two off as well because those will um, possibly be in your way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take them off while I'm here. Take those off and I'm, I'm taking off this uh, other heat shield as well. So three heat shields and then uh, drive shaft. So once you get those two uh, 15 mils off the side, you got a M10 goes right there. Now this shield should yeah, nice and nice and pull that right Now that's out of the way. Be able to get to this last E30 I need to get to get this heat shield off and I'll show you all those once it's out because it's difficult. Alright so I got two of them out already. We gotta make sure the car is in neutral. Couldn't figure out why the damn drive shaft wouldn't spin. See it there? We need a 12.10 10 millimeter. 12 point. If you guys can see that. Not a six point, 12 point. Here she comes. Alright guys, I'm about to disconnect the dog home so the engine swings forward some and that gives us room to take, get the drive shaft off the little nipple and move it over to the side. And then that'll give us our space to get the down pipe out. So, got my little fork here, give me some leverage, the motor, because he's, the motor got a six on these. Holding the motor the wrong way, no wonder. All in the back, show it in the front. Boom, boom. Now the motor can kind of 
wiggle some. We're gonna wiggle a lot more. We got stock engine and trans mounts. Uh, you guys know we got the open cool here. You can see the motor will now give us room. We'll get this up in here and kind of pry this back and uh, move the drive shaft just out of the way. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to show it, but uh we're up in there. We're just gonna move the drive shaft over to the left and I'll give us more space to get this down pipe out. Now what really sucks is since I raised up the uh you can see my spacer right there, right, right here. I took out that much more room to getting this out. So this is gonna be kind of really shitty for me. It's gonna be easier for you guys. All right, so I got all the hardware off of this, but I can't get it out because of the drive shaft. And well, mostly because of the drive shaft, I think. Oh, and then under the drive shaft, I marked it with yellow, see yellow that way you make sure it goes back to the same spot because it's, I think it's balanced a certain way. So make sure you pay attention to that. Thanks to this kind fellow over here. Give me some leverage. He got the lever on that bar like I was showing you guys here. And I was able just to pop, pop the drive shaft off the guy right there. So now the drive shaft's out of the way. And this should be hopefully all the room we need to get this out. We still got that O2 sensor. If we can get that off of there, that'd be great. But uh, now we lower the car, get that V-band clamp off, and uh, let it rip. I don't know why they did this from the factory. Put it in backwards. I believe it's a six mil or like a T40, whatever you got on hand. It's not on there tight, but the clamp itself is. So what I usually do is get the flathead in here, hit it with my palm, usually breaks it loose. And you can look, pop that bad boy off. Nice V band. You could replace this if you wanted to. I'd taken mine off probably 20 times on my Mark 7. Never replaced it. Um, now the down pipe's gonna be kind of stuck to this. I also I can't show you guys the, the little clamps that are on that uh, O2 sensor, the secondary one. So it clips onto the back of the turbo, and it, there's another clip directly under it. It seems just like it's like on the um, the oil drain line, so or the coolant drain. You might have to. Uh, get up to it with the O2 removal tool, get the other O2 sensor out to be able to get it out of there. And the new one should go in, and then the heat shield, everything, there's gonna be a lot more room in there to do things um, once that's out. So everything should go back together pretty simply. We'll see. All right guys, I'll show you where I'm stuck. I got that heat shield out, but I'll show you guys that after a little bit, because I don't really know if it needs to come out. Oh, goodness, focus. All right, so we got this O2 sensor. I just need to get that out, and I think I can slip this downpipe out. Um, I didn't have the room to do it with it connected to the turbo, so here I am trying to do it now, and it's, it needs to be heated up. I knew I should have brought my damn uh, little mini torch, but uh, oh, I have to come back tomorrow, because they close in like 45 minutes. So I'm going to have to come back tomorrow with the torch, warm it up, and then it should slip right out. I don't know. We're so close. And then, like I said, with these spacers in, it gives me a lot less room, which, I mean, that much room could easily, I mean, really help, obviously. But with the stock subframe, like, this subframe isn't doesn't just, like, slip right in. It's bowed inward slightly so when you install it it's super rigid and can never move because it's bowed so it's super hard to get in and it's not fun so i don't want to lower it but if you have a stock one it's literally like four bolts and you can lower it some and then it will come right out so there's a couple of different ways of going about this this work line stuff is is a blessing and a curse sometimes so i don't know we'll see uh we'll see what happens All right, guys, we are back the next day. Almost got this bad boy out. We are so close. So yesterday, two main things that I could have got better. I should have taken off the rear O2 and it was still warm. That um, added a bunch of times for me. And then um, with this Berkline subframe, like I've been saying, it raises my steering rack and my sway bar about an inch. So had I just dropped the subframe from the get-go, 
to get that, that little bit of room back is the option. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the subframe just a little bit, um, just loosen them up, bring the subframe down ever so slightly, and I should be able to pull that down pipe right, right out, hopefully, and then uh, slip the new one right back in. The, the new one, and that, the install itself is gonna be super simple. It's just the removal of the old one that is a pain in the butt. And I've talked to other people um, with Mark Gates, and they say that they didn't have to drop their subframe to do this, but obviously because I raised my components in there, um, I'm gonna have to do that. So, and also like, you can just do it anyway, like just drop it just to give you that extra clearance because it's, it's gonna make your life that much easier and it's four bolts you're just loosening up. But you gotta take the wheels off. So, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just being stubborn. I wanted to get off without lowering the subframe and having to retorque things, you know, yada, yada, yada. But we're gonna get this thing done. to get you some exhaust clips. I'm super excited. Been one of the most annoying processes, but thank you for this. So I wind up having to cut, <laughs> cut the neck off, and I'm selling this thing anyway. So I mean, whatever, whatever. So I cut it. I need to cut it the rest of the way off, or I could have at least. You see, I only got a little bit left, but I got it's getting angry because I didn't got, have enough angle to complete the cut. But at this point, the uh, just kind of twist. Woo. That's probably not. I think. But, uh, there we go. Oh my God. Phew. All right, this thing is absolutely massive. Anybody telling me you're able to get that thing out easily? Well, you might be telling the truth, but this thing is just huge. Huge, huge, huge. When she's out, I am happy. We'll lay the other one down beside it and show you guys the difference. <laughs> Look at that difference, guys. This thing, I, I wear extra large gloves. This thing is huge. I mean, this thing's fat too, but god damn, that was just, especially with this, this bracket, keep getting caught on things and yeah, just not, not good. I need to figure out if I wanna put this heat shield in first and then this or this and then the heat shield. I don't wanna scratch it up. So I'm gonna play around a little bit here, figure out the best method go from there. In case you guys wanted to see how things look back here. Kind of get my light right. With the turbo switch, you can tell if you guys are familiar with Mark 7's, how much longer, higher that turbo sits out, the way the wastegate connects. That'll make things a little bit easier. It's uh, not a whole lot different, but a little bit different. All right, so they didn't have any gloves. So I'm gonna get fingerprints all over it. So I decided to wrap it. And also, just so it doesn't get scratched on the way up, I got a couple of little ones. I got some up here, cause I, I you know, put some zip ties on this. I test fitted it. It slips in easy. You kinda, you guys will see. You slip it in and then you twist it backwards and it goes right up in, it's, it's sick. But, and it fits with the heat shield. So I'm gonna tie this heat shield down and we'll throw the downpipe in lower the car get it loosely connected with the v-band and then come back down um get this drive shaft on get the other heat shields on o2 sensor on and then uh yeah we'll tidy everything up down here and then go up top button everything up top and we'll be done it shouldn't be too bad this coffee's starting to hit i have to run in the bathroom here's another, another shot all right guys i know i failed to show you um, this heat shield. I don't know if you'll have to take it off, but if you do, T30 here, T30 here, you got uh, a T30 right here, and there's a T30 right back here, and then another one uh, right here. You can kind of see them all from the bottom where the threads are. There's another one right there, and one Mm, where's this other one? Oh, it's hard to see. Yep, right, right back up in there. And then, uh, I think right there's one. And then it's hard to see the other one. It's right here. So, all those are back in. Back one. And so we're gonna slide this baby in. I'll put the bracket on. And we're gonna get the downpipe up in there. Slide it in. 
Hopefully it'll stay stable enough for me to lower the car and then get it connected to the V-band up top. Let's see what we can do here. Come on, bro. There we go. Very, very easily. I don't like it. Let's see. It should be down there. Close. Ah, see. Tell you guys what, this ain't fun doing it by yourself. Definitely uh, bring a friend if you can. For sure. And you guys are wondering why there's X's on these. I, I marked my all my different hardware when I was doing uh, my subframe install. And they made like a little uh, key. So X's were for this, O's were for that, triangles are for this. So I could keep track of where all my hardware went. You hear it up there scraping on shit. Scratching. Okay. Easy. All right. She is in there. Now we're going to lower it, connect it up top, and get all this tape and shit off of it. And uh, actually, no, we'll probably leave it on there till we're done, done, but you guys get the, oh, I'm not even showing you. You guys get the idea. Sorry, sometimes I'm not looking at the camera. It's hard to see up there, get it to focus. The hood's closed, so it's all dark. All right, let's go up top. Don't know how much of that you guys caught. Pretty simple stuff. Pull it up, put it on. That looks so goddamn good in there. And you can't really see it from like this angle all that much, but I mean, you take one step to the left, you see this chunky boy down there. I got a couple little scratches on it right there from when I was trying, those damn dikes were so dull. But it's whatever. We'll have to get all this little oil off too, cause it's gonna burn on there, but damn, does that look good. Guys, I cannot get over how good this looks back there. I'm not putting that damn heat shield back on either. So that's how it's gonna sit. And uh, eventually we'll have a matched, we'll have the box back on with a nice matched um, that color intake tube. It's gonna look real good in here. I'm thinking about getting like different hardware that's powder coated to match that. And then maybe like, uh, I don't know, a couple other things to go. Like maybe, cause these are black, so it kind of blends in. But I was thinking maybe doing like a dress up bolts to kind of match, anyway. That's for a different video. Here we are, and I'm excited. Sitting here in the box, get this bad boy installed. Hell yeah, it's coming together and I'm so excited. So excited, I cannot wait to hear this thing. Kinda wish that the O2 sensor was on the turbo like the last gen for aesthetic reasons, but oh well. All right y'all, next thing I did got that O2 sensor in, which was kind of a pain. Is once you get it twisted in, you got uh, like your wires are all spun. So you have to like kind of unwind them. And then the way that the dang thing, there's a clip and oh brother, it's gonna be hard to show. It's as far as I can zoom, I'm sorry, it's shitty. There's a clip right there that holds the O2 sensor and there's another one right above it. You can't reach that one from the bottom. But getting that on is kind of a pain. All right, guys, so this is like the worst part and where you definitely need someone to help. So got a big old pry bar, stuck it up in between here like this. So you get somebody to pull back on the motor for you and then you can slip this guy right back over where it's supposed to be. And you can see my markings there, the yellow. Sorry, I didn't record it. Some people don't like being recorded. I wasn't about to ask. It was already kind of awkward asking random people for help sometimes. But uh, 
got it slipped on, happy. Very happy, that only took like two minutes. Usually that's like a, that's like a 15 minute ordeal if you're doing it by yourself. Man, hell yeah. All right, so we've got subframe tightened all back up. Looking good. Need to remark my torque spots, but that's all done. Dog bone back in, same thing. Wedge a little bit, line them up, put them in by hand, torque them down, easy stuff. Um, I can't turn the drive shaft because the e-brake came on. So, but I got one in, so I need to go up top, take the e-brake off, and uh, that way I can spin it, put these last two in, and I can put the shield around this. Then I can do the shield around the axle, and then we're done down here. We go back up top, we tighten up our clamp. Oh, and of course, finish our exhaust. But uh, I think that's it. Like three, three, four things, and we're done. I'm so freaking excited to hear this thing. Oh, we gotta put our wheels on. All right, guys, drive shaft is in. We just put that right there, that guy in. And earlier I showed you guys um, about these two. Don't put those in yet. Because this bottom one is for that shield. I couldn't figure it out. I kept trying to put it over top of that. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, no wonder. So I had to take it back out. And it goes on top of that. Now we can put this bad boy in. And then we're done, pretty much, down here. Throw the pipe on, and that's it. We go up top, tighten up some shit. We can hear this baby sing. All right, guys. Everything else is tightened. All the heat shields, all that stuff. Kind of had to do a couple things twice because I was kind of jumping down. Just so excited to get this done. Um, hope I didn't I think I missed anything key for you guys. Just. There's a couple different options, like I said, to get to get this out. Well, either way you get it out, you're gonna be excited once you do. I and mean, all those back together, way easier than it came apart. Um, which is which is difficult for these kind of things, but since you gained a lot more space with this, it just it just plays out. So I'm about to get this last uh, bit of the exhaust connected. There's two 13s down here, 13 on the V-band up here. And same. You go up top, tighten a couple things, but I'm freaking excited. All right, guys, we are all done below, and I alcoholed this up down there, wiped down all the exhaust that I had touched. You wanna get in here, try and get off all the oils as much as possible, otherwise it's gonna stain. So get in there with some alcohol, clean her up, and then, uh, yeah, I got that little clip on back there, holding that on. I need to tighten this guy still. Um, that's it. And once I got this intake in here and the engine cover back on, it's going to look tight. Real, real nice. And when I do a catch can and stuff, I'll do like the same color fittings, like AN fittings on it. And it, it's going to turn out. It's going to take some time, but it's going to look real good. All right. Everything's wiped down, tightened, connected. A little nervous. Super excited. We're going to pop this garage door open. Turn these tools in and I'll uh, set the phone up outside and listen to this first start. All right, uh, yeah, here we go. Having the car back on the ground now is so weird because the car stood so low. I was used to working on it a couple feet off the ground, but I'm looking real good. Let's fire this up, make sure it's recording audio since it's connected to the car actually. All right, sound check was good. Back this bad boy on up. Give her a listen here. I'm gonna start it in comfort and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, here we go.
I think even in comfort it opens up the valves. They don't look to be closed, so cold start they're probably open. Well this is cold start for you guys. If you're wondering where this very nice diffuser came from, it's not stock. It's the only people in the United States, I believe, that have the Rieger diffusers for the AYS3. And that was the first one in the United States to have it. And these are the Maxton little uh, side boys I had to cut and make fit to flow with this. It looks a lot better when it's clean. The car is filthy. It's going to rain tomorrow anyway, so I can't clean it today. Comfort mode revs. The smoke you're seizing isn't smoke, it's just water. I verified. It's not oil, I promise. Dynamic mode. See if this is any different. The valves just might be open right now. That's dynamic mode. Dang! I don't want to rev it up a bunch since you know the motor's cold and everything, but god damn. Alright guys, so you got a little taste of some uh stationary stuff. No, we really what we really want to hear is it under load, so exhaust is I think it's done smoking up here finally. You guys see the little spots on the I got like red rag spots. Like they're not spots, it's just like What's it called? The material of the rad. Hopefully they just wipe right off. But here we are. Here soon we'll have this new intake. Get that all set up. And we'll see what we're gonna do with the gold hardware. My car is actually filthy, but on camera it doesn't look too bad. So let's shut this hood. Boom. She's looking good. Oh, she's gonna be sounding good. I need some new tires. She's looking fine. Shoo. Alright. Well. You guys are gonna have to tune in for the next video to hear anything else if you wanna hear it. Oh, I gotta put my engine cover up. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the football.